new AI. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome to Now Departing Ordinary. All right. I have a very special guest today, David Scott. Special indeed. Yes, special. <laughs> <laughs> so many different kinds of special, yes, all wrapped exactly. up into one. <laughs> okay, so why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm 42. Uh, I live in San Diego. Uh, I decided to kind of pick up um, surf photography and videography and cinematography after I tore my MCL. Mm. Born and raised in California, uh, but originally from the mountains. So uh, now that I'm a devout surfer and surfing saved my life, um, I would never know that I'm here where I am today. Yeah. Yeah. So where in the mountains did you come from? Over by Yosemite. Mm. Those of you that have heard of the Donner Pass and those of you who have not, I highly recommend going and reading about the story and the actual the Western civilization and how the migration from east to west came over um, the Sierra Nevadas and starvation became a big factor and cannibalism was a part of that. It's a pretty interesting. Do you still practice that? <laughs> not myself. I thank God our lineage has, you know, not gone into that diet. So Yeah, not yet. We're not quite there. No. I think I would, though. <laughs> if you're dead before me and I have to survive, I'm definitely eating. <laughs> but then that's another background that I have, you know, military, you know, Marine Corps and... You know, being in wars and stuff like that. It's just a different mentality. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I love this Sorry mentality. for the vegan out there. Yeah. It was like extreme anti-vegan. I know. Not only do I eat meat, I'll eat you. I do love animals. That's amazing. I know, okay. This is ordinary, right? <laughs> is it, yeah. We have left ordinary never into cannibalism. Yeah. And it's, you never expect it, but uh, sometimes cannibals are amongst you. <laughs> okay, so. Special indeed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll just leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Um, <laughs> so, you came from the mountains. When did you come? When did you start surfing? I started surfing. Um, when I was getting medically retired from the military, it was introduced to me through Jimmy Miller Foundation. Uh, but then I stopped. I just was like doing it for recreational therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I absolutely loved it. But I moved to the East Coast in the Virginia, Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area where there are no waves at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had lost all anything that I've ever learned about surfing but came back and then got associated with one more wave and then surfing changed my life it just was from there full throttle okay yeah so around 2000 and I want to say 18 17 Mm. roughly okay yeah so that's when I started and then I started surfing like devoutly um after my mom passed when uh, was that? yeah that was uh, roughly f- six years ago okay yeah five six years ago so um that was when i dedicated because my, it just there's so much stuff that went on mentally with that and mm-hmm. after losing friends from war losing my mom she was my sing- like single parent and then lose my brother about a year and a half, two years later, wow. uh, just surfing combined my mental state of mind, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and everything that I really had drive for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah, that's a lot of loss. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people would say I've suffered a lot of loss, but being an empath too, I kind of just took everything as it came. Yeah. Yeah. When did you join the military and how did that come about? Yeah, that was a big part of my life. Um, I was like raised in the mountains. There was really no career opportunities. You can go to community college, but being raised from a single mom, it was just about like trying to grind, try to just 
make paycheck to paycheck and he really didn't have like a structure with the single mom as far as I didn't I mean she was just trying to make ends meet so I was skateboarding mm. and you know being against the grain in the mountains you were normally raising cattle or, or you know like uh, learning how to do like live off the land and stuff like that and me I just was really like adrenaline junkie you know it was yeah. like jumping off rocks jumping off cliffs so um Join the military to get out of that atmosphere, you know, away from the drugs. I wanted to protect people, you know, and so I decided that um, I had my young, or oldest son at the time, and he was three months. I said, you know what, I've got to make a change in my life, and I decided to make a sacrifice. And that sacrifice was to join the military and to try to protect those around me, and that was around 2003. Wow. Mm -hmm. And how old were you? 21. <laughs> I was a kid myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was a kid myself. I mean, you could literally see me like holding my first son and be like, I'm still a kid. You know, like that's just kind of how the culture that I was raised in. You mm -hmm. know, you just kind of did what was kind of given to you and came yeah. to you. you know? Yeah. So that was a big life changing event, though, joining the Marine Corps, coming down to San Diego. Uh, and then getting embedded into the military mindset which was a total like not like something that I saw myself doing but mm -hmm. it was definitely good for a foundation yeah, yeah. what it, part of that foundation that you received through being in the Marine Corps what do you think was so important about that and so I think being um, raised without a father mm. uh, it helped me gain uh, composure and structure and um just navigation in life, really. Uh, you were had to adapt so quickly. I mean, like the first day I went to boot camp, and I actually love boot camp. Mm -hmm. People are like, "What? It's the craziest thing people go through." I was like, "I ate three meals a day. I gained muscle. I became really fit. I became really mindful because I was like getting fed with nutrients, you know. So uh, it was, I gained, like, I think 30 pounds in boot camp. People were like, oh, my gosh, like, no, because I gained muscle, and it was good for me. The, the type of person that I was, I needed all that protein. So got out of boot camp, went into the fleet, which is your first kind of unit, you know, after you go through your basic training. Um, and then it all hits the fan <laughs> from there, you know. I think the first, like, a lot of people don't, know the story but like you know the tenacity that it takes and and how do you adapt and overcome the very first night that i was into my first unit i was woken up at two o'clock in the morning told to get out of my rack like busted down the door and all the senior marines you know that had already been to combat you know that seen their friends you know pass away from you know the the war that was going on over in the middle east um you know, they were really thorough in training you to survive. Yeah. And so part of that was waking you up at 2 o'clock in the morning and taking you for a hike up a hill and saying, get your gear, get your gas mask on and get everything. And you're like, oh, this is what I joined the military for? Okay. And you're just culture shock. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty intense. But uh, I took that training and applied it to the people that I trained. And thankfully for people that I led into, you know, war, we came back alive. Yeah. So that was a good, good lesson. Yeah. Mm. And so how long were you in the military before you left? Just under 11 years. Um, yeah, I actually had a uh, really successful career up until the point to where I deployed multiple times overseas, Afghanistan, Iraq, um, all war, mostly, Never, like a couple... Uh, UDPs, which are like on the naval ships and stuff like that, but we're always jungle warfare training or getting mm -hmm. ready to go into a war tactic. So it was always hitting the deck, running, and um, uh, so that was at the point in time where after I came back from all those times, I'd been blown up multiple times overseas, uh, grazed with um, you know gunshots, and actually endured hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
uh, myself going into like a knife fight and things like that. A lot of people don't know that. There's people that are close to me that do know that intense story. Yeah. Um, and that's some gruesome detail that we can maybe either go into or not go into, you know, depending on like what we really want people to understand yeah. about that, you know. So. Well, I guess like how, how do those experiences impact you and, yeah. you know, where you are today and who you are today? I think that is really where we're at today because of that. Um, if I didn't survive what I had gone through in the military and had so much diversity in front of me and actually absorbing the culture while in, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan, like it was so like beneficial to, to live amongst the culture, to be welcomed by the community and eat dinner with them, break bread with them. Mm -hmm. So, and then learn to love that culture as well as protecting them, even though they're going through all this like war time in their front yard, you know, we're kind of the, um, immigrants really yeah. going into their country and kind of messing with their soil. And it's hard because you are American and you have this belief system, but it's not really what it's about. And we get, you know, the same kind of accusatory belief system going into that country as we did when we came into Vietnam yep. and all this other stuff. So history repeats itself and there's so many different things. But you have pride because you know that you're helping the humanity of people. And that's the biggest, biggest picture before the politics. Yeah. You know, is you're actually helping humanity and, and doing humanitarian missions, you know, and helping. I mean, there's a really cool story that I'll share with you later, but um, not to get off subject of the question, you know, is this affected me immensely. Yeah. Um, PTSD coming back, uh, traumatic brain injury being blown up over 21 different times three of which I was knocked out concussed uh, mm. there's a lot of my friends I mean that will watch this that are amputees that have been blown up and they you know understand the value of what I went through and we I understand the value of what they went through and it's a different perspective because there's nothing less of what my injuries are compared to theirs because it's up here. Yeah. You know, how strong we are. One of my best friends, Jose Martinez, he's the number one USA parasurfing in mm. USA, and he's going for the world title. He just won the ISA in Australia. So uh, he's a triple amputee. And yeah. He's an Army veteran, you know, and he's killing it. But his mentality is everything because he wakes up. And he trains in the gym. We were just talking about yeah. that before the interview. He's training in the gym as a triple amputee to get, like, number one in the world. And unless he had that mindset, you know, from what he learned in the military, from what he learned growing up, you know, he probably wouldn't be able to push on. But we suffer as veterans through depression, uh, uh, competition, coming back, um, adaptation, coming back, and knowing, like, oh, I'm a father, like, and I'm being pushed away as a as a as a, a monster because mm -hmm. of the things that I've seen in war. So um, that is how, where I'm at now with surfing mm -hmm. that completely changed my life and saved my life. I went through like manic depression and my family was like, well, are you bipolar? I was like, I don't know, am I? Like, yeah. Like, let's go through it. Like, let's, let's like talk about it. And so I've talked to psychiatrists and I've talked to uh, professional medical and said, Hey, like, do you think that's a possibility? They're like, no, no, you're just having PTSD mm -hmm. or call PTS for, you know, now common terms. Uh, you've got traumatic brain injury, which is affecting our frontal lobe uh, immensely. And uh, we don't have the neuroreceptors firing off like we used to, um, before operating with so such high adrenaline yeah and our adrenaline glands are blocking you know and then we are just going into like this recovery mode and rehabilitation i mean i was medically retired from being blown up and having so much vestibular problems um and walking with a cane for two and a half years wow when i got medically retired uh, at first you know because there was so much vestibular uh, instability that I had to do so much rehabilitation in that and, and that's balance and you know 
inner gear stuff and wow. everything. I mean, just migraine after migraine. I still get migraines, you know. And yeah. So, but that's part of it. Yeah. Let's talk about. I mean, that's like that's very huge. That's significant. Like some people don't recover. Like mm-hmm. it takes a lot, a strong will. <laughs> and discipline to work through something that challenging and not only did you do that but you've had other very serious injuries since then and you are still surfing like yeah and like progressing with that yeah i think that's an important thing about that like if i mean you you could go out there just not surfing i mean we have enough people on the water as it is that are danger to others and you know surfing is a great outlet but it's not for everybody you know so surfing sucks just to let you know (laughs) i'm getting done to do it just keep surfing local no just kidding (laughs) to joel tudor way no i'm just kidding i mean it's not i mean but let's let's also look at it as a therapeutic outlet we have to do that we have to be able to have the benefit and so uh one more way of the organization i'm like embedded with and you know um so grateful for and honored to be part of them is that um they allow surfing therapy to become into the light for veterans yeah and anybody struggling with depression or psychological tendencies that might be like you know mood disorders or personality disorders it's super beneficial um or excuse me we're going into the clinical research in in this as well and hopefully with what i'm trying to do eventually if i can get the the backing for it is to actually have the responders as we go into the water we have the Mm -hmm. the questionnaires um how do you feel before you go into water how do you feel after you get out of the water we have um, everything set up into our heart monitoring our Mm -hmm. neuroreceptors before and after but we don't have what's going on in the midst of surfing so that's really where i want to get into is actually what is surfing transitioning from the time that you got before you got into the water the time that you're in the water and the time that you got out of the water and how your brain is actually activating and becoming more of the positive thinking yeah and how that mind is working because then you're going into the physiological side of it and then you go into the uh, psychological side of it and so i think that's what's really important about the research and especially the clinical research because we've done lots of tests and you know these tests have actually helped aid veterans not with surfing but just like helping veterans with the psilocybin researching Mm -hmm. and this actual like psychedelics like benefits and that's what's important about research yeah that relatively that's the correct terminology it's down 66 percent so that veterans aren't committing as much suicides okay so just so i understand since using psilocybin or psychedelic assisted therapy Mm -hmm veteran suicide rate have decreased by 66%. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Recovery of depression is that, like decreased six, or increased 66% of recovery. Okay. Yeah, so wow. it's, it's super beneficial. And we're going to get more numbers. I mean, but yeah. obviously that's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Somebody with uh, a, a personality disorder that has multiple personalities it could have a psycho reactive yeah you know response yeah. to that so medically we have to understand all that stuff yeah. to say so with surfing as well too yeah you know? the nuance so like outdoor therapy we go mountain biking you can go snowboarding and that's like across the board what we're looking at for therapy but for me personally it saved my life mm-hmm. surfing saved my life because to get back on that like it keeps me from depression it keeps mm-hmm. me from not getting into this dark hole that i i'm not worth anything because you have so much anxiety and external stressors yeah. every single day of your life that um can hold you down yeah and when you go out there and surfing sometimes is not always a successful session Mm -hmm. because there's people that get in your way (laughs) there are safety issues like you said i've had injuries from surfing i santa cruz steamers lane i broke my back from another surfer they ditched their board because they were losing control of their board and broke my l2 l3 l4 and i was paralyzed for three days and thank god for my best friend who was actually just watching me surf that day yeah was able to 
would take me to like the hospital and stuff like that. I like had the allotted. I had you know all everything going into the hospital, and uh, that took about a three and a half month recovery because they did a CAT scan and an MRI, and they said luckily you have no nerve or spinal damage, and it was the compressed fractures, which are like basically your wings or your spine. Uh. Mm-hmm. So all, all those were fractured, cracked really. And then the most recent injury of having a fin go into my skull, <laughs> which was uh, pretty gnarly. Yeah. I was surfing the Ocean Beach and had a fin go right into my skull and nine staples later. Yeah. That was a good one. Chasing barrels. Yeah. So, I mean, like, <laughs> relatively, like I said, like, you know, surfing has its dangers, but yeah. it's also life-saving. Yeah. So, Maybe that's me being an adrenaline junkie and just loving the thrill, but also at the same time, I'd rather have a fin stuck in my head and maybe lose my eye because I see my friend Jose, who's a triple amputee and paddling and having his team assist him, which I, we help each other, Yeah, you know, but also like having one arm and paddling. I was like, well, that's like really the ultimate thing. I'm like, there's people that have like no arms that are still surfing, you know, yeah. it's crazy. Um, but you... If I'm not up to that capability with limb loss or per, like paralyzation, I, I, the first thing I thought to myself when I broke my back because of the, the, the nerves locking up so much for three for three days that like I couldn't really walk uh, was, well, I know there's a parasurfing. Yeah, I have this. Mm-hmm. So that, I mean, hey, maybe that like honestly knowing that maybe helped your recovery because it's like you're not abandon abandoning all hope for right. something that you love. Exactly. And before I started surfing, like I was really having problems with drinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say it. Like I mean, like relatively. Okay. Um, definitely like choosing the wrong path yeah you know? and now that surfing i'm like i'm trying to take care of my body you know naturally 100 percent. i'm starting to eat healthy yeah <laughs> i love my in and out and sometimes i'm like just so tired from surfing i'm like oh i don't want to cook but you know now that i'm getting older i'm like wow i have to like teach these you know, like things to my children i have to be a good father i have to be a good man i have to be a good source of energy you know and there's sometimes i flip out on people in the lineup you know but it's just like you know i'm as a veteran that's what i get really like pissed off about sometimes Uh, it's just like i try to teach people safety yeah and they just want to ignore you you know and then when they ignore you you're just like dude like uh this girl had her like juggler slit at tourmaline right like because the fins gassed her one time no way because it was like it's just safe to one you know and i don't mean this in any like disrespect you know we had somebody pass away up in oceanside last summer you know because they were just like uh surfing and they weren't no didn't know the conditions didn't know the break and they broke their neck and they passed away yeah oh my god it's i didn't just, know that it's so it's so things can happen so quick maybe maybe we just you know lose pro surface a lot you know we just lost one recently you know so the fin can get your art like your femoral artery mm-hmm. you know or, are corroded easily and then you have 120 seconds to bleed out you know so you got to take your safety measures and they're it's very important yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's why i was so shocked when that happened when you broke your back and like hearing the story of how you crawled over rocks to get out of the water yeah, that was and- nuts. yeah that was probably pretty hard but i i thought to myself like from the, my military you know like mm. like literally low crawling you know being having like bullets whiz over my head overseas and the the just like are you breathing okay can you do this you one step at a time i floated like if you, anybody knows steamers lane it's like a point break and there's r- like really huge rocks and like um that they construct it with jetties and mm-hmm. and i was like how am i gonna get at this like i was like my back is mess i don't know what's going on with it but i cannot move my legs and so like i was like well i was a marine for you know just under 11 years so i was like i'm gonna figure it out and so i floated 
over to the rocks and I tried to lift my legs like with myself, you know, and I just couldn't lift my legs. So I took my arms, I put it on the rock and then I just do like a, like a, a push up. You know? Yeah, I pushed up and I just would take my leg and I set it on the next rock and yeah, and then my buddy was like, and then actually like that's when the locals were like, oh dude, he's like, his back's messed up. So luckily I got up to where there's like a little cement path on the midline <laughs> above all the jetty rocks. <laughs> They were like, hey, we're going to come help you. I was like, what's going on? Was, but even then, like, I started to be scared, too, because, like, I couldn't, like, my my back would shake, you know? And I was like, oh, no, like, it's messed up. So that's when I got to the top, and luckily there was, like, a fire engine. And I was like, can you guys check my back? They're like, sure. Yeah, I'm feeling no tingle, 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 no, nothing. You know, and they're like, yeah, you need to go to hospital. <laughs> they shot me up, like, instantly with, like payments yeah luckily you know being a hundred percent medically retired veteran it was free (laughs) that's good yeah you know i think that's kind of like a benefit of like you know paying it forward you know like there are benefits of going into the military and there are benefits of you know living on the positive side of life yeah you know instead of like living in the dark um, being consumed with drugs, mm-hmm. you know, heroin, things that are like chemically made, you know, stuff like that. Like, it's just not a good path for yeah. anybody. We've yeah. lost too many people in that sense. And uh, that's what I'm trying to make sure is that I stay away from. And mm-hmm. that, you know. Yeah. So how has that played into the work that you're doing? Well, right now, um, I started the uh, surf photography while I was um, residing in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, another culture that I absorbed myself in, which was absolutely amazing at the time. And like I said, I came up here, I was surfing. Oh, yeah, that's how I tore my MCL, that's right. I was longboarding and I had a nose ride. This guy I was like, get out of my way. <laughs> but he didn't move, and so I had to like jump off my board at the last second. And so I tore my MCL, went back to Mexico, and just picked up a camera. That's the first time I ever picked up a camera. That was about three years ago. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I worked hard. I had, like, a Rebel T5, Canon Rebel T5, like, nothing crazy. And uh, then now, like, um, I've gotten, you know, just this passion um, to bring surfing uh, memories to light. Yeah. Really, you know, and that started graduating into becoming more creative you know and more creative directing and more production you know and i've gotten so many beneficial uh, connections and networking i mean here we are doing this interview we know each other from surfing we met at terminally and yep. that was pretty pretty sweet yeah and uh you know i've gotten uh, lead wolf productions um that are here in la jolla uh which hopefully you'll be able to get in there too and yeah uh, i think that there's um Surf Dirt is a really good photographer. He's uh, on OB a lot, and he's extending his kind of uh, photography now. He works for Mr. Model Pizza. Super cool. Uh, He brought me into, like, the production side of things, and it's just so cool to meet different people. I mean, like, you know, uh, met Chris from Marvel Wetsuits. Um, I mean, Rob Garnett from One More Wave. So many different. I mean, there's Stoke for Life. There's Jim Miller Foundation. I can go on and on and on with so many different amazing foundations out there. And uh, with with the surf culture, that is is embraced my journey Mm -hmm. and that's why i really keep doing it is because people look at me and they're come my god i love your work i was like well i'm just making sure that like i'm spreading the stoke yeah you know yeah absolutely i mean i definitely try to make a point of doing that as well Mm -hmm. and that's why i post so many videos of me wiping out on the internet because like i feel like a lot of people take surfing so seriously and it's like yo surfing is also about having a good time right. and like enjoying life and Absolutely. you don't have to like always be like on the grind you can just like do something because you enjoy it mm-hmm. and you can just enjoy it <laughs> yeah exactly and I, I think a lot of people too get that mistaken you know it's like when you're pushing yourself to enjoy something different while you're progressing in surfing mm-hmm. it's a little frustrating yeah you know but that we need that comedy <clears throat> we need the bails I mean one of the videos that I'm trying to make is going to be about crashes and it's going to be awesome 
awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and that's going to just show, like, this is an early, like, dedication that people go through, you know? Absolutely. Like, I mean, you can see it on one of my, on my page, you know, mm-hmm. like, cut open and bleeding all over yeah. the place. And we're like, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, like, I get out there and, you know, like, it's hard. For sure. I've definitely cried in the water. I think, actually, someone on Instagram was like, you can't, uh, you know, you can be in a bad mood, but then you surf, and you can't be sad in the water. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, no, I've been sad in the water. (laughs) I've cried in the water before. (laughs) Well, that's what's great about the ocean, you know, is it will definitely show you your own true colors. Yeah. You know, because you can be angry, you can be sad, you can be stoked and so happy and Mm -hmm. having a good time. And, I mean, that's back to the story of, like, where I lost my mom. It was at Oceanside, and I paddled out, like, the day before I had to catch a train to take care of the funeral arrangements. And, you know, I was um, a Christian, and I prayed, and I said, well, what's the deal here? Because Mm -hmm. I paddled like three I tried to paddle three times you know out to the break and I was a kook at the time <laughs> you know I was like I couldn't I didn't know what I was doing you know, but I still was like I'm gonna I'm gonna get out there I'm gonna catch these waves and no it was a winter swell January and yeah. and it just it, like for three times for about half hour to 45 minutes each time it just pushed me right back to the beach and that's when I sat down I was like all right what's the deal here what am I learning and then you know, you know God's like well this is probably going to be the hardest thing that you'll have to go through in your life. You just lost your mom. Yeah. You know, so like pick yourself up, get back out there. And as soon as like I got out, I caught this most beautiful wave, you know, and I learned this beautiful lesson that like the ocean taught me and just everything coming together and catching the ride and, and dropping in and having control of my life after not having any control, any control. <laughs> None. <laughs> was just like okay like I have to let go sometimes yeah. you know I have to let go <laughs> and uh I knew right then and there that that's when surfing captivated me and it was like okay this is what's going to balance me mm-hmm. so yeah. That's why that's what I'm trying to bring into my work. Yeah. And I'm trying to bring in the captivity that the ocean and surfing, not for all, but for those that ha- has captivated us or those that it's calling us, you know, because then the ocean has so much things to give us and, and teach us that we go into fishing, you know, and then mm-hmm. we go into different cultures. You yeah. know, we go into Spain and go into the Mediterranean and we go into the oceans, the seven seas of the world, you know, and then we go to Morocco. Yeah. You know, we go into the, we try to go into these amazing Costa Rica, Central America, Nicaragua, yeah. you know, we go into these amazing places that just have this energy that is truly amazing and we're subjected to, 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 Close mindedness as human beings. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't you agree? Yes. And the ordinary would be I'm going to go to work nine to five. I'm going to try to grind and then I'm going to have a family and then I'm going to do this and this and this. Mm-hmm. But with the energy of the world, I mean, Disney's got, got a lot of, you know, cool movies and is showing us different cultures and that's what's important. Yeah. And that's what surfing is. This is a surf culture. So surfing is more creative vision for me it's a culture it's yeah it's, it's something that is bringing positivity to people's mm-hmm. lives and that's where i'm trying to go in the direction of my videography trying to get into getting hired with red bull or monster or a big company national geographic if i have to yeah you know um to do surf documentaries yeah um I think that the other thing that people don't really think about with surfing is the community. I mean, it's an international community. Like, let's, for example, let's talk about the fact that I went to Australia and I was like, hey, does anyone know anyone there? And you're like, I actually have a friend from Mexico that's, you know, doing his PhD and he just happened to start working at the wave pool in Melbourne when I went there, which is insane. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, it's a small world, but it's like the surf community is like, it's a tight knit community and like, you you, there's so many friends and faces and people who become like your family essentially because like you're with them like day in and day out like out there in the water like the highlights the super low lights like helping each other like laughing with each other whatever like you go through some stuff together for sure <laughs> definitely yeah mm-hmm. 
And you also, like, nowadays, like, people are, like, ambitious. And with the community, like, you can, you, you, you have just, like, family. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you have those bickers in the water, and then you get over it. And then you're like, hey, I'm just trying to teach you a lesson. Or, hey, maybe they're trying to teach you a lesson, and you got to get it through our thick skulls. And mm-hmm. we're independent, and we're like, oh, you know. like. But at the same time, like, at the end of the day, you can break bread together and be like, hey, it's about this and it's about that. Mm-hmm. And... You know, there's a lot of other subculture things that are going on that are underlined about localism and stuff like that. And I'm trying to boycott localism, but then at the same time, like, you know, with surfing, uh, there's like a rite of passage, like a mm-hmm. tattoo, like a tattoo, like, I mean, you're inked up, I'm inked yeah. up. You know, my first tattoo was like, give me the worst place I can get a tattoo, you know, and where it hurts the most. And so then I don't have to ever feel the same pain again. <laughs> That's how I went. It's hilarious. Yeah, I was like, just give me the worst one, like, where it's going to hurt the worst. So that way, if I ever get another tattoo, it won't hurt as bad. And truly, that's exactly what happened. Like, I, the first one I ever did was on my abs, Ooh. leaning back. Yeah, and it was the most ghetto tattoo ever. <laughs> but at the same time, like, it, it was the rite of passage, you know. Yeah. And, like, with surfing, like, you know, going to the peak when you're not from that break is kind of like... Oh, I'm just going to learn. I'm going to go to the peak. You're like, no, no, slow your roll. Like, mm-hmm. because there's experience at that peak. There's yeah. understanding swell directions. Do your time. Yeah. And there's, there's so much stuff. Like, it's not like that. We want to disrespect you. It's yeah. that there, like there's issues that need to be understood, mm-hmm. you know, because there's safety. If you're trying to take the peak and you don't know what the line of the wave is doing and you drop it on somebody and then their board hits your back and you break their back. Yeah. Or vice versa, you slice their head open. Or, uh, I mean, yeah. You know, that's, I mean, you can cause death. Yeah, yeah you so, can. Yeah, was, to you or others or both. Yeah, same with not putting your blinker on on the highway. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. It's like little stuff like that. But, you know, it is stuff that we just need to be mindful about. And yeah. That's really, you know, the conversation of just... Uh, being passionate about something not let your blinders on yeah it's i mean it is the etiquette and i think more than anything like that's the hardest part to learn of surfing I, honestly everything about surfing is hard i'm not gonna lie yeah it's difficult learning how to read waves read the reports like know where to sit but before all that is the etiquette and that's what you get yelled at for like nobody's gonna yell at you because you like showed up when you thought it was a different condition you're gonna get yelled at because mm-hmm. you cut someone off you hit someone you threw your board you were in someone's way whatever you know i'd be sensitive to it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's it's not it's not easy especially with women and the culture of women and the diversity of like how like now everybody should be equal you know that and i agree to that yeah you know? and i like to encourage more women yeah if they're skilled enough to like come like take the peak with me mm-hmm. that's, that's rad i want to see you shred just as as I'm shredding yeah you know? it's not like a competition to drop in on every wave you know but yeah. that's what that's a lot of like my style like people are like well how long have you been surfing well I've been surfing consecutively every day probably not every day but like you know like an actual a devout surfer for five years mm-hmm. you know almost six now and people would say that I've probably been surfing for 12 to 13 years because of my skill level mm-hmm. you know riding tens riding fives you know like understanding wave but you know yeah yeah i think um one of the things that is kind of surprising is like how few women are in the lineup a lot of places mm-hmm. uh i go to puerto rico a lot and like you're aware and i feel like there are a lot of women in the lineup there mm-hmm. compared to here i think the women in puerto rico are very strong women too yeah they're, and they'll like they fight for the right to be there which you should mm-hmm. you know like they're not going to take smack from a guy because you know like they're like telling them not to come to the peak yeah you know it's not that kind of world anymore yeah especially like in mexico and like those kind of like sub like uh hispanic cultures like there's a lot of macho you know yeah and there's a lot of but there's also a lot of women rights standing up Mm -hmm. for themselves now and i think that's important well the irony is that like here in california i've been dropped in on by more guys than anywhere else and it's really disgusting yeah because if you're able to be dropped like if you're able to like surf the wave like and you should be able to like i mean and i, I probably get dirty looks sometimes at like tourmaline but tourmaline is such a inconsistent like yeah. peak break like peak wave that like 
a lot of new people yeah. going there. So it's all, it's it's all situational. Wave, yeah. But yeah, if I see a woman, I would like to give her the wave. I would hope that I do that. And if I, people have seen me not do that, I apologize. But <laughs> like, I like to make sure that everybody's getting their opportunity. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it's like the same. Like if you, if someone else is already paddling the wave and they're their pee priority, like don't fucking paddle the wave. Yeah, <laughs> Stop. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I've literally had to push people off of me, not like off of the wave, but like they're getting up like on yeah. top of my board. Right. And just because I'm a woman just doesn't mean I'm not going to get the weight. Yeah, just keep their board and ding it. You know, <laughs> or smack them. I, and nobody, nah, I, you, hey, ladies, if you're out there surfing and you smack a guy in the lineup <laughs> and he's going to come back and all come off and hit you, trust me, there's a million people that are probably going to drown them. So. I mean, yeah. I don't want I mean, to violence. Yeah, we don't promote yeah, violence. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not gonna resort to violence. But, you know, it's just like... Don't do that. Like, if you're not going to do it to a man, don't do it to a woman or a non-binary person either. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. just like, don't do it. Just like, don't be a dick. But just as much as like, don't be a dick, like also know the etiquette. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. We can so, go back up. We can go back and forth like all day forever. about that. Yeah. You know, it's so crazy. Yeah. There There's also this like aside from like localism this like little culture where there's a big group of people who hate on adult learners mm -hmm. and they'll be like this isn't a place to learn how to surf and that drives me absolutely insane because mm -hmm. it's like where did you learn how to surf mm -hmm. probably at that break mm -hmm. and like you were once a beginner too mm -hmm. and like would you want people to be coming after you like that yeah well i learned blah 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 and it's like no it's no different mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> just because someone has a couple extra years like why does it make that different understood yeah absolutely i think that like the relative like perspective of safety comes into play like you said the etiquette and i was just arguing with somebody the other day like you know like hey you know this is a learner spot i say it is a learner spot but you don't go up to the peak and you don't drop in on somebody when you don't have control of your board True. go down a little bit and continue your learning process yeah and absolutely do that that's great you can still surf the same water yeah you know but just understand that you can't go and back paddle people to the peak when you're not that good yeah. <laughs> you know they're, they're i mean you know i mean you yeah. know of all people like you being a surfer in OB and surfing Sunset Cliffs, like, that's a pretty gnarly spot to learn how to surf because of the localism. It's weird because I feel like I do the opposite of everyone else. They're like, I'm going to surf these tiny waves right. and the next day there. And I don't do that. I go, like, throw myself in. And I don't know why. Yeah. I think people just, like, had a lot of faith in me. So I, they've taken me to places mm -hmm. that they feel like I can surf. And, like, sometimes I couldn't. But, mm -hmm. like, I have enough, like, confidence to be out there. Right. And now I'm, like, learning how to, like, be in those conditions. And, yeah, like, I'm, like, out when it's, like, 10 feet. And it's scary. But, like, yeah, I can get on big ways now because, like, I have that, like, mental fortitude in those types of conditions. Would you say that you actually gain experience from surfing different breaks or would you say oh you were comfortable surfing the same break and so it kept you limited i think it maybe both okay um i do think if you only surf at the same spot you only know how to read that wave because that wave is going to have a certain behavior and certain pattern that you get used to and when you go somewhere else there's so many factors beyond even how the wave is breaking like the surrounding area mm -hmm. and like knowing wh how to get in and out for example like in puerto rico a lot of places like there's a keyhole you have to know where that keyhole is to get in and get out and yeah. not only where it is but like how the currents operate so you know where to position yourself to be able to get out absolutely uh yeah. so i think there's a lot of value in surfing new places so you put yourself in new situations so you learn that spot you learn the conditions and you have a wider variety in your mental rolodex to know like oh if the wave is breaking this way at like this depth or this speed like this is how I need to behave in the water but also like safety with like getting in and out of the water also yeah, reef yeah mm -hmm. rocks all that like knowing like when the tide is appropriate to surf there and like if the tide is low for example like what are the conditions going to be like getting out right. or if it's high like can you get out yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um, and like there's been times where, like I you know the tide came up when I was in the water and could couldn't see the rocks and I dinged my board super bad because yeah. there was a rock where I got out and I couldn't 
didn't see it. And I've had people be like, oh shit, I saw you like trying to get in. You like ate shit. Are you okay? And I'm like, oh man, you saw that? Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Yeah. been there until my fingers have scars all over them. Yeah. yeah. But it, I think, so I think it is good to go to new places, but it's also good to like go to those same places with different conditions and like challenge yourself on conditions you think you can't serve. For example, here in OB, I'm such a loud mouth. I was like, why is everyone being so weird about serving OB? It's like not that scary. And then I walk over to the pier and it's like so big. And I was, like, standing there with my little twin fin, which is, like, the smallest board that I have. And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know if I'm going to go out. Because it was breaking, like, super far right. back. Yeah. It was, like, breaking, like, out, like, halfway down the pier, which is I'm not used to. And I was like, ah, I don't think I'm going to do it. But then this boogie boarder walks up to me, and he's like, no, the tide's coming up. It's going to be really soft. Just go for it. So I was like, okay, fuck it, we're going. So I started paddling out, and then the set comes in, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. So I literally turned around and got out. And I was like, I'm not going to do it. But then I see this girl sitting up on the wall, like, watching me. And she, like, believes in me. Like, I can see it on her face. She's like, oh, here's this girl with, like, a floral wetsuit and, like, a pink board, and then she's going to go rip. And I was like, I can't let her down. Like, I have to go now. So I paddle out, and I am like pissing myself I'm so I've never been so scared ever surfing before and I'm like out there I'm like why did I do this like Uh, why am I here uh, and I'm like freaking out this guy comes up like paddles over me and says hi and I'm like hi and he's like oh okay and then like two minutes later because my brain was like offline two minutes later I realized like I was talking to that guy in the lineup like just the day before and he was like oh what's up like you're out like that's awesome and I'm like I'm sorry. I'm, like, so scared right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. so scared. I mean, yeah, situations like that will open your perspective and be like, whoa, I didn't think I could achieve that. Yeah. But then somebody's, like, you know, like, hope for you. Yeah. You know, to, to score, you know, it gives you that drive and gives you that passion. That's, like, sometimes, like, with the stuff that I post, you know, it was like this gnarly wave that somebody's just shredding and they're like, Oh man, like I want to do that one day. Yeah. And so it's also creating inspiration, you know, mm-hmm. so it is, it's a full circle. It is. And I feel like there's been so many people that across your journey with surfing will like encourage you to leave your comfort zone. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's my buddy Zeb. He's a local OG, like, OG of OB, you know, like, Zeb Ryan. Like, he pushes me. I mean, he pushed me. <laughs> we are, we're down in Mexico, and he's pushing me to do, like, these 20-foot waves on a 6'2 board. I was like, I don't even have the right board for this. So just go, bro. <laughs> oh. I'm like, all right. And I'm, like, literally sliding it out because my rails aren't digging in, but I'm still, like, trying to take the drop, you know. And I'm having fun, oh, you know. Yeah. And I didn't realize that Toto Santos was so crazy of a wave you know I'm just like yeah I'm gonna go for it you know like and then now like I have like such a good regiment like you said the community is just like yeah. I have like Eric Nicholson like there's just this huge big wave riders that do Mavericks you know mm. they do Hawaii Hawaii Maya Bay they do like Toto Santos Thrills of Killers and they're like yeah bro come with us next time I was like yeah I just eat a vest <laughs> <laughs> I wanna not die you know, anybody wants to sponsor my vest yeah. for soup you yeah. heard it yeah, right here exactly um, that's all it takes. I mean, I have yeah. Micah Shanahan with Attic Surfboards who has my gun waiting for me. I just Easy. need to get a vest. The vests are like 600 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's 30 foot plus. Wow. I can't wait to see you on a 30 foot plus wave, dude. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. That's the reason I didn't do this last time. I surfed uh, Toto Santos at 25. This is max. Insane. Without vest, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's... Uh, yeah, you're getting a little dicey there. <laughs> yeah, you're getting dicey because you're getting held down. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when I started, like, meditating. I started practicing a yoga routine. I started doing breath control um, because it's so important. Uh, not just with surfing, um, but with our everyday life. Yeah. Um, the, you can take 10 minutes out of your day uh, yep. and get up earlier and use breath control to actually regain composure when you're stressed out at work and you can take that breath control and you can like literally channel all this negative anxiety and energy and breathe it out yeah and also gain all this like more clarity in your mind yeah so it's all connection Mm mm-hmm 
what do you have coming up that you're working on or people that you're collaborating with or just stuff that you're excited about that you want people to know about? Well, um, doing some official drone coursing right now, um, and we'll see how that works out. I just want to get into the, the cinematography editing. Mm -hmm. um, I want to start editing or start doing some interviews mm -hmm. on like a routine of people's surfing and mm -hmm. what surfing does for them. Uh, and I also want to see the dark side of it. Yeah. So I want to bring the light of positivity of surfing, but also like the dark side of surfing too, like the, the struggles that people have. Um, well, let's go back. Let's step back. I want to show through these interviews on how surfing became the light after their darkness and what okay. their darknesses was, because you, we really need that raw expression yeah. of darkness of what held them down before they found surfing. Yeah. Because surfing has benefited so many people, and that's, like, I really want to eventually um, do documentaries in, in surf therapy and surfing in general. My biggest project in life would be to create a surf documentary which would have aerial footage of surf breaks so that you can see right hand breaks a frames left hand breaks point breaks vice versa i mean everything yeah but also on the surface land as well so you can see these from an aerial view you can see these from a surface view and then get into oceanography where you can get into the bottom shelf mm. view so that that way we can actually go and use cinematography and show people how the current is moving on the southwest swell into say a north facing break so that way we can see how it's actually shifting against that shelf mm. and creating the wave. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's, I actually want to collaborate with One More Wave and call it One More Wave. Because mm. once we find that science in wave, like, or the expression of wave, maybe the creative mm -hmm. expression of waves, people might know the dynamic of surfing mm. completely. Yeah, amazing. Because we're always searching for yeah. that wave right always searching for one more wave that yeah, is true always searching for one more wave but like to understand the dynamics of energy yeah. is something that we we want to see in vision mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that that's what would be it okay uh where can people find you Right now, they can find me on Instagram, which is my main platform. I'm constructing a um, website as okay. we speak, so working with the developers and things of that nature. But Instagram is d.m.scott. Okay. At the underscore, but it pretty much comes up. Once you type in d.m.scott, it will come up. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Uh, is there anything else that you want to share that you want to shout out? Yeah, I just thank you for doing this and inviting me. I think that this is part of like just such uh, an honor and an inspirational type of setting that like our community is becoming stronger because of you. And I appreciate you. And I think that the passion that you have behind your creative vision is helping my creative vision have more root. Yeah. Know? I think that's part of like the community that we're involved in. You, you stick out your seeds, you plant your seeds, you grow roots, and then the roots. Yeah. Depending on how you want to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depending on you where you're from, originally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, I'm in the country. We all knew that from the beginning. But, you know, like from the, the roots we plant are embedded with our growth. Yeah. And I just thank you for having me. Thanks for, <laughs> you know, being part of the community. It's yeah, thank awesome. You, thank, you, thank you. My, actually, I have one more question for you while this freaking lawnmower is going. Um, parting advice you have for anyone parting. that wants to do what you do or, you know, overcome obstacles such as you have or get into photography, any of that. What advice would you have 
Uh, anybody that wants to get into photography, you know, it's all personal growth. You can yeah. go and you can read a book. You can get there and you can study a course online or you can, you know, but it's all on how you grow as fast as you want to. Mm-hmm. And I think that your vision has no limitations. So why should your learning capability and your learning ability? So put yourself out there. Take it from all angles. Brainstorm. Mind map. You know, do your dream board, vision board, uh, because those things aren't just tippy dippy stuff. You know, there's actually fundamental tools. So yeah. Get out there and let your mind expand. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Appreciate it. And let's uh, wrap. <laughs>